Uh, yeah, so the first thing I want you guys to do to get started, so this talk is going to be, originally I wanted to uh, kind of build a, a pet, so yeah, a little bit about Fediment. So Fediment, uh, from a developer point of view, is kind of like, uh, it's like a federated, uh, meaning uh, multiple, well, I'll just say a little bit, federated uh, uh, like transaction system. So uh, federated is just means it's, a, it's like a multi-sig, right? So different people can uh, share control of uh, whatever is whatever uh, the federation controls, and uh, and uh, transaction system is like Bitcoin, right? So there's a transaction and there's inputs and outputs like Bitcoin, and uh, and then a signature for a transaction. And one really cool thing about Fediment, one, one interesting thing about Fediment is that the, uh, which we'll kind of get into today towards the end, is that the, uh, the transaction that it has is uh, extensible, right? So you can build something called a module, which can add inputs and outputs to a transaction. So uh, you can basically add new consensus rules really quickly or, or remove the default ones that you have, right? So you've probably heard about Fediment with, uh, associated with like the word eCash, right? Which is, it's kind of like a way of building an account system, right? So uh, People can deposit Bitcoin in and then uh, get an IOU. But the neat thing is that the federation itself uh, doesn't see any balances for users, right? Uh, the, the users hold like a, an IOU that uh, they can redeem, but the federation can't see the history. Or there's, there's no such thing as even a user, right? There's there's uh, there's just these IOUs that, that uh, clients have, and uh, so so that's a module, right? The so eCash is a module. The on-chain wallet is a module. The uh, Lightning integration is a module, which Jordan will get into. Uh, he's in the back left there. He'll get into in the next talk. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's 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 Fediment, right? So you can you can build like uh, 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 kind of like uh, you know, it's a it's a it's like a kind of a custodial platform, right? So it can custody Bitcoin, but in a multi-sig, and you can apply any manner of rules that you can express in code, which I think is is pretty exciting. And it doesn't doesn't require any soft forks or hard forks in Bitcoin. It, it works right now. Uh, or it, it, it all the all the nest the requirements are already in Bitcoin, uh, and we're sort of trying to get towards a, a developer release right now. So just kind of tightening everything up. And so in the, uh, historically, everyone has, uh, by the way, any, any he, he, how is progress going loading this page up? Right? And you can say, sorry, who, who has it? Who has it? Like, up. Oh. Does anybody not have it? Who doesn't? Who's had a problem? Does anybody not have it? I'm seeing no instance available. No instance available. Anybody else not have this up? Anybody else see no one yeah, is available? Yeah, yeah. You get that we can try again. Lower again. Yeah. It's just like you got Cody. Cody did us a uh, the number on us with all the <laughs> sales pitch out there. So yeah, so I just want to say that this is uh, so the, the the conference is built around Replit, right? Uh, which is a really amazing tool. Unfortunately, Replit struggles to compile things. Uh, uh, means we got a cool project, right? <laughs> this guy's going to fix it for us. Huh? This guy's going to fix it for us. Yeah, he's going to fix it within the next day, I think. Then maybe by the end of my talk, it'll be fixed, but unfortunately, not, not now. Um, yeah, so we uh, we got connected with Clover. Uh, I'm Sean from Clover is here. Uh, and within a week, they were able to give us like a VS code in the browser. So uh, so, so this is really neat. And uh, you're able to get like a full developer environment and everything, and it actually works. So. Uh, yeah, um, let me see if I got anything more to do. Yeah, so one interesting thing is, uh, up to this point, if anybody wants to extend Fedding and build a module for it, right, they had to fork, 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 this, fork the repo, uh, which is not ideal. And uh, so this is kind of the first, what I'm going to show you today is like the first attempt at being able to totally build a module outside the Git repo for Fedding, right? So you can build it externally, uh, pull in all the dependency, dependencies you need, Write your code and actually, and to some degree, test it. Right? We still have a little more work to do. Uh, basically, removing all the assumptions up from our test frameworks so that they're running inside the Fedium Git repo, so that they can be run outside of it. Right? So, so this is going to be this is really exciting to us. It's been somewhat difficult to write modules so far, and it's still pretty difficult, but it's getting a lot easier. And so, yeah, my goal is to just kind of get people set up with an environment where over the hackathon and the rest of the weekend they can uh, attempt this if they'd like to. And uh, the workshop is going to be more like. Uh, um, once we have this environment, play around with it a little bit. So, uh, so yeah, you should have like a terminal open. You see a terminal? Is there a terminal by default? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to create one. And uh, let's just do a little um, exploration here. So on the side, you can see there's two there's two repos clones, uh, Fediment and BTC++. Fediment is the full Fediment source code. Uh, 
and it's a lot, right? This is one reason why it's hard to create a module is you have to wade through all this uh, uh, source code. And this one here is a much more trimmed down version, which we'll get to towards the end, that uh, includes a module, but you know, setting the starter things, and, uh, uh, but, it's, but it's kind of outside of the source code. So if you do a hackathon project, hopefully we can branch off of this one as like kind of a starter project. Uh, yeah, it's small, I guess. But um, so let's let's first off go into Pediment and let's try to play around with it a little bit. So I'm gonna close the sidebar, go over here, and uh, so how many of you are in now? Okay, I'm just gonna go and uh, yeah, we got we got 45 minutes. So we're in like home yet, I guess. And if you do LS, you can see the Pediment repo. Can you zoom in, make it, make it bigger? Yeah. Didn't like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, CD and Defendant. And uh, let's see, this is going to be a little difficult at such a high resolution. Um, so have you ever, have any of you ever used the tool just? Built by Bitcoin's very own uh, Casey Rottermore uh, of uh, Ordinal Spain. So, those of you who don't know about Casey, he's a really amazing Rust engineer. So, he built this with Just, which is like a it's a it's a really neat way to just uh, make shorthands for a bunch of co uh, commands that are common. So, like for us, it's like building the project. Clippy is something that checks for kind of uh, style errors, uh, linting, testing. And uh, so we have. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, Does Justin need to be louder? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I mean, just for the people in the back, it, it actually helps. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can be louder. Uh, okay, so we have this. So we have uh, two tools uh, that we built to, to basically spawn. And I think these are going to be interesting for people to hopefully, hopefully, if people can take these to their own projects. So it can spawn like the entire world that Ethereum needs, right? So Ethereum needs a uh, Bitcoin node, and all it needs is the block headers. So it can spawn Bitcoin. But we can also use Explorer or Electus. So it'll spawn those two. Uh, it needs Lightning nodes. We support LND and Core Lightning. Uh, and then there's a bunch of things that we have internally, like uh, that I'll show you in a bit. So you can try. Let's try. We'll try the easier to use. One of them is in Tmux, which is even harder to use. I mean, this is convoluted, like uh, VS Code in the browser. Tmux and VS Code in the browser, right? Like, let's, let's, not, let's not go there unless, you know, it's not for the paint of heart. Uh, the one problem, though, is that the copy and pasting doesn't work in the simpler one in the, in the browser. But, uh, you know, I, I just have to, like, last year at TabCon, we tried to do a workshop, and uh, we ended up spending the entire time downloading stuff on the slow conference Wi-Fi. So this is, uh, this Clover setup is, is pretty amazing. Like, I don't think we'd be able to do this without it. Okay, so we'll try uh, just fed shell. Yeah, so in this Fetiment is or BCC++? in in Fediment. So yeah, this is a little tool that uh, runs a bunch of processes at once. And so uh, this bottom one down here is our test framework. We have like a Rust project that can that knows how to spawn all these binaries. Just make shell. Uh, when you're in the Fediment folder, just fed dash shell. Fed dash shell. Anyone have problems with that? People see this. Oh my God, that's just unbelievable. This is unbelievable. I don't. I'm just gonna stop. Uh, <laughs> only goes downhill from here, to be honest. Uh, okay, so this is a. So we have this thing called Fediment bin tests. Uh, recently renamed to Debian, but uh, we're on a little bit older uh, get branch here. So. Uh, so this one will spawn everything, right? And uh, so one of them is Bitcoin D. So here's Bitcoin D. Hopefully that's. Mm. Um, that's not good. Bitcoin D didn't start. Uh, or Bitcoin D stopped. Let me see. Oh. Oh, sorry, I don't really know what I'm doing here. New. Ready to turn on? Okay, we'll try it. Let's see if Bitcoin is running. Yeah. 
Just doing a little cleanup here, sorry. Um, it's going to kill everything that might be a problem. Was that suggesting you just destroy the answer? How do I do that? Let's go back to the original URL. Oh, there we go. Destroy that and launch us. Very good. I was messing around with this all morning, so. Awesome, look at that. Okay, give me one second. If you give it a second, it like opens everything for you. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, second try. Uh, when Fed Mint just fed shell. Yeah, so it, it starts uh, Bitcoin D, which uh, the Federation needs to deposit money in, right? When you deposit money in, you need to prove that you gave them Bitcoin on chain, and the Federation needs a Bitcoin note for that. But the cool thing is that it only needs block headers. It doesn't need, uh, trans it doesn't, it doesn't need a blockchain, it doesn't need a transaction index. Um, it doesn't need, uh, okay, there we go. Let's see, Bitcoin D. Bitcoin D looking good. Another cool thing is see how LND and CLN haven't done anything yet. Uh, so we like this Fediment bin test tool like does it all in order. So it, it starts with Bitcoin D first, waits till it has has, has mined enough block, right? Then starts LND, uh, then starts CLN. Once those are ready, like you see, these two aren't aren't there yet. Once LND and uh, CLN are ready, the Lightning gateways, those are the things that Jordan will discuss that uh, connect the Federation to the uh, to the Lightning networks. Those start up. And then once all that is done, uh, we do we start the federation. So we do a key generation ceremony, and then we start uh, producing consensus. So you see over in the Fediment Bs, you'll, if you see here, you'll see stuff about uh, block height. You know, uh, it'll say epic. That's like a, kind of like the analog of a block, right? So that's like consensus being produced. Uh, everyone got this part. So cool. Uh, I will show you, I'll, I'll try to do it in here, and then it will, it, it will have problems copying, and so I'll show you how to open up a new terminal and get the get all of this environment to work in the new terminal, uh, so that we can copy and paste, because copy and paste doesn't work in here. Okay, Fediment CLI should be available, and uh, you can see a bunch of uh, stuff will print out, like a bunch of commands. And the interesting one to get started is info. <coughs> so this will basically show you what uh, I'm gonna, what is in the wall? Um, and so, sorry, it's hard to do this. So yeah, you can see the network we're on, we're on reg test. We'll be able to mine blocks yourself, stuff like that. We're connected to a federation, I think the ID is above that. That's like a threshold public key representing all of the, the, the uh, members of the federation. So like important messages are signed, the configuration of the federation is signed with that, that threshold public key. Uh, it's got a mint, our default one is house trustee mint. Uh, and then you have a number, you have a balance, right? So you have a total amount and a number of nodes. What is a node? This is an eCash token. So it's a blinded IU that uh, corresponds to a uh, denomination. So you can see the denominations on the left side, they're just order of, orders of two in sats. And on the right side is how many of the, each denomination you have. So we just have, by default, we have a limit of three, three, three nodes for every denomination, uh, but that's configurable. And so, um, I will show you how to like pull an eCash token note out of the wallet, and I won't be able to copy it, and so we'll, we'll do the new the new terminal trick. So you can do payment CLI spend, and let's say let's try to spend one one sat, so one thousand mil sats, and it'll print this guy out, and uh, yeah, you won't you won't be able to copy. So uh, and that's totally fine. It's it's a it's a default it's a fault of this project. Like the copy the copying is a little weird with this thing. So what you can do is you can open a new terminal, uh, go back to Fediment. 
and you have to source two files. You have to load some environment variables in, into your shell, right? So like right now, that event CLI won't work. It doesn't know what it is. So you should be able to do source.tmp env. So this just has a bunch of environment variables that that little tool uses. And then you gotta source one more file, uh, scripts, aliases.sh. So this just has a bunch of aliases uh, plugging in the right environment variables. And uh, this will get easier. Uh, sorry, you have to go through this, but just kind of a workaround with conference Wi-Fi and everything. This is the best we can do. So, yep. so if you do that, now it'll work in the new terminal window. So source.tmp env and source scripts slash aliases.sh. <coughs> And again, I apologize for this. Uh, so source scripts, that was. Aliases, that is. And you can tap them to you in your favorites. Who has uh, successfully done that? Wow, okay, there we go. Any, any still working? A, .tmp env, in the, and we're in the Fedium folder, .tmp env, then scripts slash aliases.sh. Uh, why might my temp then not be there? Yeah, is that mproc tool running? Did you CD into Fediment? I did CD into it. And I have the just running in the other way. Sets a bunch of environment variables uh, and has like paths to the right places, paths to the binaries, paths to the files. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're like building the whole world here, right? There's like ten processes running, and uh, and so usually this happens just automatically, but because of the copy paste issue, like usually we just be sitting in that mproc tool, but we we'll want to be copying stuff. Uh, the other thing you can do if that doesn't work is just have like uh, just make a file called clipboard, and then just like you know when you run commands, you just like uh, carrot to the file, and that just writes it to the file, and you can open the file with the VS Code, and that's your clipboard. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of workarounds in this world. Uh, I gotta learn them all. Okay, let's spend some money. Uh, okay, so let's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just do small amounts here. Uh, so, uh, spend another thousand sats, a thousand millisats, and then copy it. This is. These are eCash tokens, and. Uh, I wish we had a tool to like visualize them a little bit better. We should have something. Or maybe we do. <laughs> we do. We do have a tool. <laughs> that, that's not a joke. I forgot this tool existed. Try uh, Fedium CLI validate and then paste it in. Yeah. Wow. Out of everything. <laughs> so you can see how much of each denomination, and these will all add up to 1,000 millisats. So that's what that's how this eCache works. Uh, every all these denominations each have their own public key, and uh, these these notes are signed by the federation. Fediment CLI val Fediment dash CLI validate and then paste in the, the token. Yeah. So a token or a note has more than one denomination. Is that? Uh, yeah. Well, so te technically technically a note is just like one denomination, uh, and then we're we're looking for a word to call like a group of them. Internally, we just call it a bag. 
but that's not the best, uh, the best uh, thing. Yeah, I should say it's not token note. We've changed to using the word note because token is token. The word token has been sullied. <laughs> okay, so validate. And so, uh, actually, one interesting thing now is you can do Fediment CLI info, and you'll see that their balance is changed. Um, so I did two spends, so I'm down one. I'm down two thousand. But if you did, if you, I, I meant to do this before and after and note the balance. So see your balance has gone down. Like these notes are going to pull out of your wallet. Uh, but if you still have them, you can reissue them. So Fediment CLI reissue and then paste it in. Fediment CLI reissue, yeah. And you'll see there's a transaction ID and, a, and, a, and a, uh, this is basically an output, right? A transaction ID and a, an index, right? So this is something that you want to you want to go. Uh, like basically, a, 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 an issuance of these eCash is in progress to yourself. It takes like a round of consensus. So you're waiting for the federation to produce signatures. And this CLI we're using here is our first hack of the CLI from like a year ago. And it's not very smart. I'll show you the new CLI we're working on. This is uh, smarter in a second. Uh, but you'll notice that if you run info again, your money's not there yet. Uh, that's because there was a, we were waiting when the previous man finished. We were waiting for the uh, Federation to do something, uh, and we haven't fetched the outcome yet. So you can do Federation CLI fetch, and you'll get your money back. Uh, run fetch, and it'll see it, it found the issuance, and then do info again. And mine was, you know, ending in nine or eight zero zero zero, and now it's ending in nine zero zero zero. So my my money has returned. Uh, I'll show you one other. I'll show you our new tool here. Uh, that you use Fediment CLI NG, this NG for next next generation. Eric is a Star Wars fan, apparently. Uh, so we have this tool, Fediment CLI NG, and it's really interesting. So some deficits with our legacy plan. There were a few deficits. Uh, one of them was that it wasn't very crash safe. Like if it crashed in the middle of operation, uh, uh, funds could be lost. Um, it wasn't very good at concurrency, and Jonah will talk about the gateway, uh, the Lightning gateway, which means needs a lot of concurrency. It also wasn't great for privacy because we didn't have like some uh, notion of like an operation. So like, if you want perfect network, really good network level privacy, whenever you're doing a certain operation, you need to know like whether you need to open a new like Tor circuit or something, whether you need to open a new network connection to the federation, so that on a network level they can't uh, detect anything. Because they can't detect anything, they can't tell the difference between uh, transactions on transaction level. That's what the eCash does. But uh, uh, this would, you know, this new client will allow so that there's uh, less leakage on that. There's we can uh, eliminate all the network level privacy leakage. Um, uh, there's one other one. Oh yeah, the other thing is uh, this, this new CLI is modular, right? So we can add new modules to it. And so that's hopefully what we get to at the end of the talk is uh, showing uh, how you can extend it and add a new command to it. Uh, okay, so ng info, I have no money. So uh, ng, if you do ng info, there's no money. So and I'm gonna go through this a little fast, it's not super important to, to get. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend myself 100,000 sats with the old command thing, so I spend 100,000. Copy the token, and then do Fediment CLI ng reissue, and then paste it. Fediment CLI ng reissue. And so remember how the, the previous time we did the reissue, the money didn't show up immediately. We had to run a fetch command, right? It wasn't. It wouldn't like sit around and watch for uh, whether whether it succeeded or not. So this time we do it, and it starts a little state machine, right? It runs in the background, uh, and the CLI will wait for it to terminate. But you could just run it, you could just spawn these in the background and then subscribe to updates. Uh, so this one, you know, it, it sort of says what it's doing, it spawns a state machine, it uh, creates an issuance, it creates a transaction, gives it to the federation. Now it's waiting for the federation to issue some signatures. Uh, and then um, when it's done, it's done. And without calling like a fetch command, we can just say info and uh, it all shows up. So this is kind of like a new project that we're working on that is, uh, that it, like the state of payment has been the server side is really good, and the client side is kind of stupid. The client side is basically just to test the server side and integration tests. Uh, and so now we're building like a really good client that will is at the level that it needs to be. Okay, let's pause there for a second. Ask anyone has questions. Yeah. Uh, one of the modules on the on the multi sync. Can you swap it out for some other like? 
say, like a frosted limitation or a frosted limitation shore? Yes, so in terms of hackathon projects, this, is a, this would be a really great one. Uh, the on-chain wallet is a SegWit, you know, SegWit wallet, and it hasn't really been touched in like a year or so. Uh, it's been pretty, pretty set. And so what we'd like to have is a Taproot wallet. I mean, there's some big benefits. It's lower cost, but it's also better privacy, right? So you have this whole federation that have tons of people in it, and on-chain it looks like a one-of-one. One. Uh, that would be sick, you know? Uh, the problem is, is that the consensus in the federation needs to produce one signature. And uh, you, so you need a threshold signing algorithm uh, that each member can run and to produce one threshold signature, to find in one signature. And the example of that, there's a, a thing called Frost, which, which works if everybody's in the same, if, if there aren't any malicious parties, but it can be disrupted. Basically, they designed it so a malicious party can disrupt it, but you can locate who, who is malicious, right? Who's, who's disrupting it, right? And then so you can rerun the algorithm without that. Uh, and that's what Roast is called. Roast is just like rerun it uh, because you, you notice who uh, disrupted it last, last time. And so, in order to do a, a tablet wallet, we would need to implement Roast, and we've been wanting to, but haven't. Uh, there's a guy, Nick, uh, from Australia, who came to a hackathon, I think, uh, in Austin. It was Bitcoin Plus Plus. Was it Bitcoin Plus Plus? Yeah, he did Frost Unit when we did Sync Unit. Wow, Bitcoin Plus Plus, yeah. So, last Bitcoin Plus Plus, he, he built a module that was uh, like a Frost based on chain wallet. Or, I, I don't know if it was actually a wallet, but it, it, it ran Frost. Uh, but it was like a very Kind of expect it wasn't like a sound version of. Does he have like a website that's like? Yeah, it's UCXO, UCXO Club. Club. Yeah, it's wild and insane. Like, it? No, a it's a beautiful HTML. <laughs> everybody, go to, everybody go to UTXO Club. It's so that would be. At the end, I'm gonna give some hack ideas. That would be a really fun one if you know about Frost or Rose. Uh, I'd love to help you integrate consensus. Yes, Cody. Justin, why is the wallet so difficult to do? Why can't the federation just generate its own addresses? Um. So yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so well, let's let's move on to so this this. <laughs> I'm going to answer that interactively. This is the workshop. Uh, so we just we we mysteriously in this developer environment, you opened it up and you had a bunch of money, right? So the question is, where did the money come from, right? Uh, so let's uh, explore that, right? So Penny with CLI. Uh, if you run it, it'll print out a little thing. So this is the thing we're interested in, pegging address. We're borrowing the uh, verbiage from Liquid, which I think could be improved upon. Uh, pegging address uh, is like a deposit address. And the idea of pegging in is uh, the federation has uh, a, uh, a descriptor, right? So who knows the descriptor language? Anyone familiar with descriptors in, in Bitcoin? Yeah, a yeah, few of us. Yeah, so it's yeah, the output descriptors, right? So it's it's just a way of saying like what 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 Bitcoin related metadata is surrounding public and private keys, right? Like what do these public and private keys mean in the context of Bitcoin, right? If you have a private key, but is it paid a uh, paid a pub key, right? That's one sort of contract in Bitcoin. Paid a pub key hash. Is it paid a script hash? Is it segwit? Is it wrap segwit? Is it taproot? Is it multi sig? Is it Data set and multi so you can compose it. Uh, and so, Federation has a native SegWit wallet that is uh, K of N multi sig, uh, with, without XPUBs, with just like single public keys, right? So, let's say this, this one's running through a fork. So, each Federation member has one private key and a corresponding public key that's shared with everybody. And so, it does not use an HD wallet. So, that's Cody's question, right? Why doesn't it use an HD wallet? Uh, so the reason is, is that uh, clients can generate their addresses without having to request a consensus round. So you can generate uh, an address, peg in address, peg in CLI, peg in address. You can generate this, you can see how fast it responded, like we didn't have to wait for anything. Uh, and what we do here is we, the client will generate a new private key, which is basically a secret, and they will, uh, I figured it's add or multiply, but like something like add or multiply that to the to uh, or they 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 they, they do an operate like a cryptographic operation on the public keys of the federation, and so they basically create a new multi sig that the federation would be able to control if they had this private key, but they don't, so they can't spend it yet. In fact, they don't even know it exists uh, when you deposit into it. So this is an address that would become spendable by the federation if you gave them the se uh, secret, right? So let's send some money to it. Uh, so you can do uh, this, you know, it also has Bitcoin CLI in here. Really quickly, that, so that winding key that you're applying to that one, 
So you deposited the federation, and the federation can see that you deposited into it, but there's no mechanism to control it. And so now, when I wouldn't I'm even know you deposited yet. Well, well, this, once I do the deposit, they said they yeah, can't sweep it without giving me the eCache, right? This is why if they generated the address that they control and I deposited to it, there's no way to force them to give you the eCache. But if I deposit to it and I make it atomic, so that in order for me, if, like I can give you the eCache, I can give you the lightning key if you give me the eCache now. Now I've not trusted the federation when I do this deposit. It's like an adapter signature. Uh, it's not an adapter signature. It's a blinding factor off of the. Uh, uh, yeah, let's keep moving. Let's do the let's do the basics here. So, uh, Bitcoin CLI is here, uh, and so you might know send to address. I think it's called, and so you can paste that address in there, uh, and let's send it one Bitcoin. Um, uh, let's send it point point one Bitcoin. Uh, it, if you send it up, uh, uh, stupid JPEG. Let's send it one Bitcoin. Uh, if you yeah, um, if you send huge amounts of money, you'll notice that it's a little slow because it got off a lot of cryptography happening. Um, and so you get a, uh, a transaction ID, <coughs> and so you'll want to uh, make note of that. And so now uh, you'll want to mine some blocks, and I think we need to mine eleven blocks. So we got this like little mine blocks tool. So that's this is one of the things that that alias is. Uh, one of those one of those tools did is we just have like a bunch of aliases to make things easier because like I don't know I think send to address and generate to address have like the parameter switch it's really confusing yeah I never get it right uh, so mine blocks and then you can say let's say eleven yeah, yeah I don't have my command okay so if you source scripts lib.sh uh, you can do that sorry this is you can see it's the first attempt at this workshop. Um, source scripts lib.sh, or you can attempt to compose a generate to address command, which is <laughs> good luck. Uh, yeah, it's like generate to address, and you have to have the number of blocks in the address, I think. Everyone got that? Source scripts lib.sh, and then mine blocks 11. Those are block hashes. Yeah. Yep. So these are just the eleven block hashes, right? So the the federation needs, I think, ten or uh, it, it basically it has it lags behind. It has like a chain tip in terms of block hash, and it lags behind a number of blocks. So it lags behind like eleven, uh, ten blocks. So once you mine eleven, now uh, if you pr prove that you deposited like ten blocks ago, it will recognize the block hash that you get. If you if you give a proof that a given transaction was in a block ten blocks ago. Uh, or 11 blocks ago, it will, it will now uh, credit that as an input, right? So you're basically creating a transaction. Where the input is a proof you deposited on chain, and the outputs are requests for eCache, right? So this is the modularity, right? Like, these are, this is a transaction with inputs and outputs from two different modules, right? And so that's kind of the really cool thing, is that if you add a new module, you can compose it however the hell you want in transactions, right? Uh, okay, so we have the... Uh, we have nine blocks, and so now we need to do pegging. Um, Bitcoin, uh, yeah, pediment, CLI, let's just run peg dash in and just get the help, help manual. So it asks for a TXL proof and a transaction. And so, where's the comment uh, from? I think it's get TXL proof. Uh, so, like, what is a uh, TXL proof? You can do Bitcoin CLI, get TXL proof. Uh, TXL proof, maybe? Mm, Bitcoin CLI, get TXL proof. And so, it'll just show you, like, a little help command, um, what it is. And so, returns a hex encoded proof that TXID was included in block, right? So, if you trust that the block cache associated with that block was mined, right, which the Federation has consensus on and lags a number of blocks behind uh, the chain tip, then that's proof that uh, this was actually deposited into, uh, into the address of the Federation controls. So instead of, uh, once again, instead of uh, trying to write this command out manually, because you have to uh, write JSON by hand, uh, which isn't fun, uh, we have another tool, uh, Git. I'm going to go back to the, I'm going to grab this I'm going to go grab the transaction ID. Remember we did uh, Bitcoin CLI, sent to address, and then we got a transaction ID. So I'm just going to copy that transaction ID, 
go to the bottom and say get tx out proof and paste it in. I right, copied it wrong for there's a space there. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was like a space and then... Oh, it's just this. Yeah. Okay. The uh, perils of coding in the browser. Um, okay, so that's our TXL proof. And then we need one more thing. We need, uh, you remember that command? There's, we needed a raw transaction. So there's another command, hit transaction. Get raw transaction, excuse me. And so this is like a raw hex encoded Bitcoin transaction. Perhaps yesterday you might have learned about this if you went to, I bet if you went to Lisa's workshop. I don't know what she talked about. She probably talked about this. Uh, she's really great at explaining all this stuff. Um, and so now we're ready to deposit into the Federation. So Betty Mint CLI, uh, peg in, and I'm just going to run the help again. So we need the TXL proof. So Betty Mint CLI. Dash dash tx out dash proof, and then we're going to copy this first block, paste it in. And I probably should use environment variables, but whatever. Uh, and then we need dash dash transaction, and then paste in the second block. Right. So let me see live peg in dash dash tx out proof, and the proof, and then dash dash transaction and the transaction. And this is enough to prove to the Federation you gave them Bitcoin on chain. Uh, and all the, all the Federation needs is a trusted source of block headers, which is pretty cool. Um, so, uh, and at this point, they have no idea that this transaction relates to them at all. They might know that it's a three or four multi-sync because it's, uh, that's visible on chain. But if we attack with even that one, it would be visible on chain. And now we get a transaction ID. And if you do this info again, it won't show up like we talked about previously, right? Still the same balance. But if we do this uh, fetch command, which we're shortly getting rid of, it will say, ooh, I found an issuance, right? There's a transaction with a proof that the Federation was given Bitcoin and outputs requesting IOUs. And it's like, here, I found them. And the client knows how to turn those IOUs into these Zcash tokens. Basically, the IOUs when the Federation issues them are blinded signatures. Uh, and the, the client gets them and unblinds the signature. So it has a signature of the Federation that the Federation has never seen before, which is cool. That's a, a blind signature to the crypto magic. Uh, that's how double spend protection works in the Zcash system, right? Uh, it, whenever uh, the Federation is given a signature, uh, one of these uh, notes, Zcash notes, Zcash tokens, uh, it just checks, hey, is this still signature valid? And have I seen it before? If I've seen it before, that's a double spend. If I haven't, it's good, as long as the signature is good. And so if we do info, um, You'll see now I have a god awful lot of eCash notes. Uh, got much, much, much richer. One whole Bitcoin worth of eCash. I wouldn't recommend that on, uh, on mainnet. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Any questions there? Okay. So I was going to cover the lightning aspect of things a little bit, but I'm going to skip that. Uh, oh. Huh? Going a bit. What? I'll set some basis and then you come this. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, I'll do it like really, really quick. Um, Just another five minutes. Okay, I won't do it. <laughs> 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 okay, so I had this second Git repo, and I just wanted to share how uh, that this modularization right, works. We have these different modules, right? So you can go on the Fedeman code base and you uh, scroll and scroll and scroll, you'll see this folder modules, and you'll have a pediment-ln, and there will be three of them. There's a common, and there's a client side, and a server side. Most of it's in common. There's a little bit in the client and server. And so a new module has two components, a server side and a client side. And the modularization happens at build time, which uh, is not great. Like what we want to finish, we want to uh, make it happen at runtime in the future, like Core Lightning does kind of. Uh, it happens at build time, so you need to, if you want to have custom modules, you have to build a custom Fediment D, and then a custom client that, that knows how to interact with those modules, right? So uh, yeah, we're we're, we're going to try to get that to run like more of a runtime thing uh, in the future, but we got to get the the basic thing in there first. So Previously, in order to create a new module, we have this dummy module too. Uh, dummy module is just like a starter. 
And so previously you need to fork the repo and then you start working this dummy folder, which kind of stinks. Like if you want to share it with other people, it's, it's a little difficult. There's a bunch of forks to type in. Uh, not great. So the idea is to uh, have a separate folder uh, that just has a few crates, right? You have your module, uh, these little three crates that correspond to the module, and then you have a custom client and a custom uh, the client side and the server side, which you build your module into. Uh, and so, yeah, let me just show these really quick. So, what does it look like when you build a uh, custom D? Um, let's see. So here is Pediment D. It's uh, it's in the BC plus plus folder. Pediment D source Pediment D. So it's pretty cool. You have uh, you import Pediment D, Pediment D, Pediment D. Uh, <laughs> so you can maybe do something about that. Um, and then you say, say Pediment D new. Uh, with default modules, that's eCache, Unchained Bitcoin, and Lightning. And then you say with new module, and you just pass it the thing to, to initialize the starter module, or the, you know, whatever module you're building. And the same thing happens on the client side. Um, you have a Pediment CLI um, that works the same way. You can just import Pediment CLI, run it with default modules, and then you add your own module. So now you have uh, a client and a server that both add new consent, that know how to add new consensus rules, uh, new APIs and stuff like that, and also how to interpret them uh, from the client. So, uh, a lot of the work that I've been doing in the past few days is trying to extract our test frameworks and stuff, and that M uh, MProx is the tool that uh, fetch out uh, these tools from Pediment and be, be able to uh, run them outside. Oh, I, should, I might have forgot to do something. Yeah, I did forget to do something, so uh, we may be well, waiting for compilation here for a while. Uh, so I'm gonna CD to BTC++. I'm gonna run, this is, uh, I may get wrecked here, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I could get wrecked here. So I need to run a new uh, Nix, Nix, so we use this tool Nix for all of our, for like our dependencies and everything. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get wrecked here. I should have, I should have run this at the beginning. Um, so I'll just, let's just pretend this was done. And uh, so what you could do then is just run that same, uh, I think we, I renamed it to just mprox, it's the same thing as the fed shell. And so you, you drop into a new thing here, uh, a, new, a new thing, uh, but Pediment CLI would all of a sudden know about this new starter module, and uh, the server side would be running that uh, as well. And if it finishes, I can show you, I just have, it's very simple right now, it just has one endpoint that you can, uh, it's a ping pong endpoint, so it just has a new endpoint and uh, let the client can ping it. Uh, and I'm, Basically out of time, so that that will be the last. If this thing can finish, I will uh, I will show that. But any other questions while we wait? Uh, did you do the test for the hell is it? Um, the tests I think need this to happen. <laughs> yeah. So I have I have one little. I'll, I'll let me show you like our little test framework. Uh, so yeah, Penny has two really interesting test frameworks. Uh, one of them was pure Rust from the, end, the, the beginning, and we could like uh, do it, but it, it assumed like this whole federation thing is running outside of it, right? And then we had another one where we had we just had a god awful amount of bash scripts, and we would uh, write CLI commands and stuff against these bash scripts. They were very flaky, hard to maintain, and uh, uh, just crappy. So we, we wrote this tool that could, we basically ported all the bash scripts to Rust, and, uh, and so now this so this thing outside of our repo is able to run a test. Uh, so BC++ plus test, test, tests. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this, this is pretty neat, right? We do some initialization. We pick this process manager. So this is a thing that can spawn all these shells. And then when you kill the process, it will kill everything it spawned. Uh, a task group sort of uh, works similarly, but for things inside of payment. There's a stall kill handler. It will uh, kill all those when you do it. And so we just run this one function, fed shell with the task group and the process manager. And we get all the stuff that you saw in, M in that mprox tool, right? So this is all happening under that mprox tool. It just runs this and then just tails logs. Like actually what all it's doing is tailing logs. Uh, so it barely does anything. Uh, and this is where all the magic happens, just being able to. So this is, I think, a really cool thing if you're working on a different project. We should try to collaborate on like allowing your project to consume this. Because this is pretty cool. Uh, and it can all be compiled to just one binary, right? So you can do click. Um, kind of related to this. If we update one of the gateways, right, do you need to install it, or not gateways, but you make your module to make a custom pediment D, right? Yeah. Does that custom pediment D have to get run by all the guardians? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, 
I think if it isn't, that module just won't be able to do anything. Right? It, it needs, I think it would still run, but, uh, or it should still run, but it just won't. Uh, so this is one of the things we like to play this. We're going to have to get good at like, these upgrades. And if we can do this at runtime, it would be a lot, a lot easier than having to have people you know, build custom type of piece. It's like, uh, hopefully a temporary thing. Um, yeah, so, but you can see like we're able to write a test where I call thing and CLI module, and I say which module I'm using, and I just say oh, my command is ping, and over here the server will spit out pong, right? So it's, it's pretty cool, like uh, you get the server side running, the client side running, the whole federation running, and we can write tests on it against it in Rust. We're still working on porting like our more kind of granular test framework. Uh, I think that might be done by the end of the weekend, like one of our contributors kept is working on it. So yeah, we have a bunch of cool test, uh, test infrastructure that I kind of want to share, and a lot of what we've been working on is allow external module developers to be able to leverage all this. Um, so yeah, I have a couple ideas just wrapping up on what people could do if they want to build act on, right? It's part of this conference. The idea of the conference is like, first, first day is like learn the basics, the second day is learn some more advanced stuff, right? Uh, and then the third day, maybe parts of the second and third day are act on. Right, and uh, so I want to give you guys some ideas if you want to build on Fediment, what you could do. So one thing we've been working on a lot is how to set up a federation. Um, I don't know how to use uh, Figma at all. Like we got all these like really nice flows on how like uh, UIs each guardian would get, each 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 one of these uh, people running the servers would get. And you know you go through stuff with the federation, you choose a name, you know you choose uh, how many block confirmations you need, a bunch of stuff like this. Uh, and so we have like APIs to build all this, and I actually built a prototype that's like extremely simple that can consume the APIs. And now we just need like a kind of a production version ready one that uh, would be a lot easier. Like we have something right now, but it's a little more of a developer tool, to be honest. Uh, if you don't know uh, very much about how things work, it's error prone. So like we really are trying to uh, move over to a new uh, like initial setup experience. And I think in like a focused couple like day or two, we could probably implement this. So yeah, let me know if you're interested, if your front end developer would like to work on this. I think we could probably have a working version of this by the end of the weekend. That would be really cool. There's also a, a, a gateway UI for the lightning node that Jordan will talk about, which he's, he's been working on. Um, another thing would be we work on this, this like starter module and try to have it do something, like build an account system. I started a previous hack from like a month ago, building a little thing that was like kind of a lottery. So you'd, you'd enter in a lottery at a given block height, you put some money into a contract, and then when the block cash for that came, it would be used as entropy to choose a winner. Right, so that's like a really simple little module that uh, would be instructive to build, and I built most of the code already. Um, so that would be a fun one. Uh, and another thing I mentioned is new client, right? Uh, this new client that sort of did things automatically, and every everything has like an operation ID. So like one thing that would be really cool is when we're using this client, can you try to use uh, like spawn a Tor circuit with that? Like we haven't really tried to integrate Tor in earnest yet. Uh, so every time you're doing a new operation, like create a new circuit, uh, a new Tor circuit, like a, new, a fresh kind of, uh, connection to Federation over Tor. I think this tool RT, it's like a Rust client, a Rust implementation of a Tor, a Tor. I think it might be ready, like it's been being built for a long time. I think it might be ready to actually integrate that. Uh, so that would be a really fun hackathon project. Uh, and those are kind of like in Fediment itself, but like externally, I, I guess I mentioned, uh, uh, yeah, I think Cody, is Cody still here? So you have a, an idea, right? Yes, I have a great idea. Justin's going to be helping me with it this weekend. So, yeah, it's uh, stable stats, right? So, the way that Bitcoin Beach Wallet does um, USD balances without having a bank anywhere up and down the stack is that you turn that into a Fediment module, right? And so now any Fediment can have an associated USD balance for all of their users without touching a bank anywhere up and down the stack. So, basically, like a federation that manages its own peg using, using an, uh, yeah. hedging on an exchange. Right. Yeah, it's not a peg, it is a synthetic USD. Oh, it's a synthetic <laughs> USD, sorry. It is not Luna. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know about that financial engineering stuff. Uh, <laughs> so one other idea uh, that would be really cool is like, uh, at some point we would like, like this client to be able to run in, uh, in WASM. Like it, 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 I think it compiles to WASM, but this new client we haven't really run in WASM yet. It's like one really cool thing that I think we'd eventually want is something like web elements, right? Uh, some of you might know web elements, right? But for Fedigan, right? So like uh, when you write these new modules, they need one thing. They need like a default module that can, they'll be like, I want to build a transaction, right? Here's an output side of a transaction. I need it funded, right? Like and the wallet has a default module, the eCash module that will fund it, right? And so a cool thing is if, if a, 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 like, if you could have something like running, running in a web environment, uh, 
or like a, like a, something like that, like a browser environment, if the client running in the browser could be like, hey, like externally to the extension or whatever is running there, uh, could you fund this transaction, right? And it would work very similar to WebLN. Uh, something like that would be really interesting to work with uh, this new client and uh, was and a bunch of cool things. So there's some ideas I have. I am now, I think, out of time. You are. I'm out of time. Uh, and I will pass it over to Jodam to teach you all about the Lightning integration with uh, Fedeman. Hey, Justin, can I get 30? Over who made this demo possible, right? Like without this, we probably wouldn't have had an interactive demo, and it would have been hard to. Yeah. 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 Yeah.